So in this video, I want to do a coding interview problem. I usually use LeetCode to do problem solving because I feel like it's a really great website and has a lot of great problems that are given in interviews. So that's why I usually use LeetCode. I also use HackerRank and others. Uh, so I want to show you guys a problem and how I solve these type of problems. Uh, so the first problem that I want to do is a two sum. Uh, it's called two sum. Difficulty is easy. And even though the difficulty can be easy, hard, medium, definitely when you're getting interviewed with the pressure from the other, in, other interviewer, I still believe some type, times easy problems uh, can be quite difficult, especially when you're at, in that zone, when you're really pressured. Uh, so it's really good to practice over and over. I uh, practice, uh, you know, you know, trying to solve these problems in a certain amount of time and just putting yourself in a situation where things can be more comfortable to you. I also like to solve my problems in C++ uh, because I feel like um, it has a really great library, the STL library, and I just feel more comfortable doing a lot of these interview questions in C++. Uh, so uh, let's get to the problem and the first thing I want to also say or something else I want to say is the first solution I'm going to give you guys is a, a n squared solution uh, but there is a faster solution and I will go through both solutions and the reason I want to do that is because the first one is pretty obvious and the second one might not be so obvious obviously when you do a lot of these problems a lot of these uh, companies want to see you do a problem and can you optimize that problem can you make it faster so I want to show you uh, that as well so the first question is given an array of integers so I'm going to be given this array so technically I can see from my parameters that array is nums so this nums is an array which has 2, 7, 11, 15 returns and indices of two numbers such that they add up to a specific target that pretty much states that two numbers in here add up to 9. So as you can see, because num0 plus num1, 2 plus 7 equals 9, I'm going to return 0 and 1. So in any array given to me, there could or cannot be an answer. But here it says you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution. So right there I know that no matter what array they gave me, there's always going to be a solution. So I don't have to uh, write code for that test case. And it also says, and you may not use the same element twice. So that's something I have to think about and make sure I implement in my code. So the first thing that I'm thinking about is that n squared solution. I could do 2 and compare 7, do 2, compare 11, do 2, and compare 15. The reason I didn't do 2, then check 2 again is because, you know, I don't want to use the same element twice. So then I loop again. I use 7, compare with 11, 7, compare with 15, then do 11 and compare with 15. So that's a pretty good solution. Doing comparisons, comparing 2 with everything, 7 with everything, 11 with everything, 15 with everything, and on and on and on if it was bigger array. And the way I can write that is, you know, do a for loop. So I'm going to do from 0, so from 0 to the size, or less than to the size of the array. And it's actually a for, uh, two for loops because I'm not only going once, I'm doing two, going looping through these seven, looping through these eleven, looping through these. So I'm going to have two of these, and they both are going to loop the size of the array. So here I have, this is going to loop two. Then it's going to go to the 7. So this is going to go to the 2. To the first one. Then this one is going to do 7, 11, 15. But I don't want to do 2 twice. So I only want it to do the next one. So if I write 1, that's actually not going to help me because that's always going to do 1. So that means it's, if I'm in 15, it's not going to do the next one. It's just going to do this 1. I wanted to do the next one after where I'm at, and that's I where I'm at and the next one. So that means if I'm in 7, so let's say this loop the first time to 2, then it does 7, 
the next one I want is 11 so it's going to go to uh, the third element and all I want to do is right here is check if nums i and next to it equals to target then I'm good then I have answer so the way I can write that is if nums i plus nums j equals to the target then I'm good and I have the answer and actually I'm gonna put brackets there so once I'm in this point I have to think of exactly how am I gonna write this so if I have 2 and 7 so I have 2 plus 7 because that case is eventually gonna happen equals 9 what am I exactly gonna save I have to save this index and this index so where am I going to save it obviously I need to return an array so that means I have to save my answers in an array so what I could do in C++ a vector pretty much an array I could do an array of size 2 and what I would do is do you know my array of 0 is going to hold you know the index of i and then it's going to save the index of j so it's going to save the index 0 and the index 1. If I did nums 1, it's going to save that 2 and that 7. But I don't want it to save that 2 and the 7. I want it to save just the index. So that's why I'm doing here 1, saving index, not number. And same as above, save index. So, looking at my code, everything looks fine. This is running n squared. Push it here. This is running n squared. And the last thing I need is to return my value or return my array. I don't know. So, I'm going to return my array. So to go over everything again, this is going to do an n square loop. So it's going to do 2 for the first loop. And then for this one, it's going to do 7, 11, 15, and do comparisons. Then for the next one, it's going to do 7. And then for all these, it's going to do 11 and 15. Then it's go, going to go here again to 11 and then check at 15. So once that's done and once you find the target of ni plus nj is going to equal the target I'm going to save those indexes to this array and return my array. So I can run this code and this is pretty much a test case solution and I'm going to submit my solution and see if that's correct. And as you can see, the answer has been accepted. So my n square solution works. However, I don't want an n square solution because there's a faster. I can actually do this in linear time. So there is a way that I can run through this array only once. And so instead of having to do 2, 7, 11, 15, 7, 11, 15, I can literally go through this array 2, 7, 11, 15 once and I'm done and there is a solution obviously that solution you have to think a little bit more think about it a little bit more uh, analyti analytically uh, so I'm going to show you guys how I came up with that solution and what I actually thought of so I'm going to erase all this so to run the linear solution uh, I have you have to think of a different approach so there is a way actually to solve this where you can actually just go through this array one time. You don't have to do 2, 7, 11, 15, 7, 11, 15. You can actually do just run 2, 7, 1, 15. And the way to solve these problems is that think of algorithm data structures. That think about a heap, think about binary tree, a map, stacks, and queues. 
which of those can I apply to this problem uh, so it can give me a linear solution and uh, and you can just the more you start working with these data structures the more comfortable you can get with them uh, for me using a map uh, is very simple and I feel like I can use the map to solve this problem in linear time so what I'm gonna do actually is what I want to do is I want to do 9 minus 2 and if in my map 7 11 or 15 exist then I then I have an answer the same thing with 7 I could do 9 minus 7 which is 2. If 2 exists in my answer, in, in the array, in my map, then I have the answer. Then I could do the same thing, 9 minus 11. If negative 2 exists in my array, then I have my answer. So I'm not looping over and over, I'm literally looping through this one time. So what I'm going to do in my array is save 2 as a value of 0, 7 as a value of 1, 11 as a value of 2, and 15 as a value of 3. And the reason I'm saving these as a value 1, 0, 2, and 3, the re only reason that that would matter right now, is because it says you may not use the same element twice. So for example, let's say I have a 3 and a 3, and I want, you know, the target at 6, and I have this 3, and my algorithm says, do you have a 3? Then it can be yes, but I have to make sure that is not itself. So I can have 3 and 4, I just have to say if 3 exists, or um, yeah, you, let's say I have this 3, and 6 minus 3 is 3, so if 6 minus 3 equals 3, so if, if 3 exists, and where I'm at is not 3, so itself is not 3, then I found the answer. So the first thing I need to do is put these values right here in line 5 in a map. So the way I can do that is to just do a regular for loop. This is actually going to run O in time. And it's just going to do the size of the array. So I'm going to do, actually I should even need these brackets. I can just say I'm actually going to write everything here. So I'm going to say map of type. A map is a key value pair for you guys that don't know. Do my map. So my map of 2 equals 0. Of 7 equals 1. Of 11 equals 2. And then here, this is also going to run linear time. It's also a for loop. And I'm going to do what I'm talking about. I want to do this 9 minus 2. So I'm going to write, I'm going to make a variable. Oh, I'm just going to call it comp. Do target minus my num0, which is 2. So 9 minus 2 is 7. So if 7 exists and the value 7 is not itself found answer. And in C++ to do that is pretty easy. You can say if my map comp so 9 minus 2 is 7 so if 7 so if that's true that means it's in my map and my map 7 which is 1 is not equal to my my variable so so is not so if 7 which is actually 1 is I'm not in this place so it's different then it's not itself then I found the answer and all I need to do is save that information and I can see that information in an array or a vector so I'm actually saving, so I have to save the indices, so the, so the index, which is 0, because that's where I'm at, index, 
and actually the not the my map comp is seven but that's actually one so that's the index so technically these values right here are the indexes so I can even write right here sorry I can write right here saving index to value in map so my map is technically a value index pair an array of one equals my map comp and all I need to do is return my array but I never declared this array so what I can do right here is do my vector and array the size 2 and let me see if it runs with a test code right now so your answer expect an answer so good so before I submit my let me see submit my solution see if I got this correct my answer was actually ex accepted and this ran in linear time so to go back to what I did what I did is I did a map of actually value and index pairs so this is index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, a value 2, uh, two 7, 11, 15, and I put that in my map. Pretty much what I said here, I'm going to run this one time. I'm going to do 9 minus 2, which is 7. So here, 9 minus 2 equals 7. If my comp 7, if that exists, if my comp 7 exists, which it does, even though it gives you 1, it exists because if I if this actually would have been an 8 this would have been false this would have given me a false and never gone in there so if 7 if it's in there and my 7 which is in the, this is my index 1 is not the same index because if this would have been index 1 that means I'm reading that 7 value twice so this is actually for the first time is 0 so if is there and it's not the same value then we're good save the indices to my array and return my array and that's how I solve this to, to some problem linear time thank you